Hi, everyone. Welcome to the California Coastal Resilience Network webinar series. My name is Dan Hosfeld. I'm the coordinator for the Coastal Resilience Network. I'm a Sea Grant Fellow at the State Coastal Conservancy with the Climate Ready Program. Um, today, we are going to hear from Zoe Van Dievenbode and Carolyn Rader from the County of San Mateo's Office of Sustainability on their program, Youth Exploring Sea Level Rise Science, or the YES program. Uh, as a reminder for how the GoToWebinar interface works, if you have a question, you can navigate to the questions box and type it in at any point throughout their talk so you don't lose the thought when you have it. And uh, we can also ask you at the end of their presentation to, to get some questions from you. I'll read your questions aloud once they're done with their presentation. And uh, we, the speakers will respond and you, will, you, you can totally follow up with more questions as they come along. Um, we will also be following up after the webinar with a recording and the slides from today. We also expect to finish up a, a few minutes before the hour today as a heads up. Um, and that's really all I have before we get started. So I'm going to hand it off to Zoe and Carolyn. Great. Thank you, Dan. All right. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much for tuning in during your lunch break to have a conversation with us about the county's Youth Exploring Sea Level Rise program, or YES. So today, what we're going to cover is a little bit of background on the YES program. We're going to talk about the program structure, some upcoming projects and goals, and then we're here to answer any questions that you might have as well. So a little bit about us. My name is Carolyn Rader, and I've been involved with YES for a few years now at the County of San Mateo's Sustainability Office. I work on our climate change and adaptation team here, and two of the main projects I lead are our Municipal Climate Action Plan and our Sustainable Purchasing Policy. I also work with National Geographic and the New York Times during the summer to teach photography and climate change to high school students. I'm also super pleased to introduce Zoe, who was recently hired to work on the YES program full-time, and I am thrilled to have her on our climate change and adaptation team. Oh, thanks, Carolyn. Hi, everyone. Um, so I am about a month into my position here um, with San Mateo County's Office of Sustainability. I recently moved here from Seattle, Washington, where I was working on my master's degree at University of Washington with the School of Marine and Environmental Affairs. Um, while earning my master's degree, I was also working for King County's Climate Action Team, working on climate change communication, education, and outreach with students um, and also English as a second language communities. I'm super excited about my new role here with San Mateo County, where I will be leading the YES program while also working to develop a youth leadership um, network and also opportunities related to the environment and climate change within San Mateo County. So now that you've so now that you've learned a little bit more about us, um, we want to know a little bit more about you and also provide an opportunity for us all to um, learn about our backgrounds and where we're coming from and how our work relates to sea level rise and climate change. Um, we did have a poll going, but rather than doing the poll this time, we're just going to have you um, write your responses into the comment box. So the question that we have for you is, how does your work connect to sea level rise? Um, so you can just respond by putting your answer into the question box. And we'll give you a few seconds to reply. Um, and yeah, and then we can look at that later. All right, okay, research, we have one. Perfect, we can see these coming in. Yeah. So thank you, so we can look at those later on at the towards the end of our presentation. Thank you, everyone. So going into a bit of background on what our program is, the YES program is part of the County Sustainability Office and falls under our Sea Level Rise initiative called Sea Change SMC. Sea Change was established in 2015 through the leadership of Supervisor Dave Pine, who is one of the county's Board of Supervisors. You know, the Bay Area has already seen waters rising since 1900, and I just wanted to see if anyone has any guesses of how many inches that might be. 
So I can't hear anyone. Any guesses? <laughs> no? So I know you're all on mute, but I was kind of hoping that you are shouting at your computers, and I really like that image. So thank you for humoring me um, during our lunch break here. So the answer is actually eight inches of sea level rise since 1900, and the rate has actually increased threefold since 1900. Sorry, since 1990. And our goal with this initiative is to increase awareness and understanding of sea level rise and climate change impacts to increase coordination on sea level rise planning across the county. And the name itself, Sea Change, has an interesting origin, and it actually means a profound or notable transformation. We originally chose this name for our initiative because not only are our shorelines and the sea literally changing, which I'm gonna go to a bit in our next slide, but we also need a transformation or to sea change in the way we do planning. What we've seen in the past is that no, what we've seen is that the past is no longer a roadmap for the future. And moving forward and giving that flooding does not stay within city boundaries, there's an even greater need to collaborative and have a coordinated approach. And actually, several months ago, our team launched this very type of collaborative, a program that we call Climate Ready. And we bring together about 150 folks once a month. And we talk about climate change impacts, such as rising temperatures, heat waves, wildfires, extreme storm events, health risks, and equity concerns. And a lot of our understanding and outreach about sea level rise actually came through the Sea Change program, and this was through our county's sea level rise vulnerability assessment, which was a study that took about two and a half to three years to do, and we looked about what exactly in San Mateo County was going to be at risk from sea level rise flooding, and we used three different flood scenario projections to do this. And what we discovered is that San Mateo County is actually the most vulnerable county in all of California just in terms of sea level rise and how it relates to property value. The value of the property is exposed to both coastal erosion and flooding in the long term, which we describe as 50 to 100 years, is roughly $39 billion. And this includes 34 schools. So that ties back into our YES program. El Nino and atmospheric river-based winter storms in the past have and continue to have an ability to accelerate and exasperate these flooding impacts on the ocean front, so on the west there, and the bay front side on the eastern side right there on this map of San Mateo County. The map in this study shows what we call our mid-level rise scenario, which is 3.3 feet of sea level rise with a 1% chance and um, annual storm, and also has a future erosion scenario for the coast. The map illustrates what we could see of more widespread flooding during these storm events in the future, but it also shows that a lot of vulnerable areas um, are actually the low-lying areas are, are currently now and are also um, or were formerly wetlands in the past and have been built over. And actually, in fact, one of our guest field trips involves canoeing around um, one of these low-lying areas called Bear Island. This map scenario shows flooding potential that if, if no actions are taken, but Fortunately, there are a lot of steps already happening, as Zoe will talk about a little bit in a future slide. So this study is part of what is included in the new YES curriculum, and it's really influenced how the program has evolved over the last couple of years. Initially, in 2015, the original pilot of the YES program was funded through a California Coastal Commission whale tail grant, and um, also had additional support from both Marin, San Mateo counties, and the USC Sea Grant Program. And the project is really designed to both empower Bay Area youth to directly engage in climate change solutions and really apply those in their own communities. And since 2015, I mentioned that the program has evolved a lot over the last couple of years and has now reached over a thousand students in the county. And of those students, about 34% of them are eligible for free and reduced price meals. And we've actually had some um, more recent ESL field trips as well, which Zoe will go into a little bit more in the future. So going into our guest goals of the program, our main three goals are really to educate students about the risk of sea level rise and local adaptation strategies, to engage young people meaningfully in local sea level rise science and policy, and to really empower youth to have a voice in adaptation planning. So this video right here, and I'm gonna, Oh, great. So my colleague Jackie and I developed a new curriculum for the YES program last fall, and Zoe and I are now continuing to develop and refine this curriculum lessons. 
So these three videos right here, you can see the little clips of lesson plans. The first one here is a glacier melting demonstration, which shows what happens to sea level rise when land, um, when land versus uh, sea ice melts. And the second one is actually one I created that has a 3D printed map of the county. And you pour three different cups of water onto this model, and then students use toothpicks to mark different locations that they recognize in their community. And then we have a discussion about what this means to them and how, how they're feeling about it and how we can explore solutions together, which goes into this last, this last video that should be playing now. And it's showing essentially different adaptation strategies that you can do against flooding and sea level rise. And students can see um, the first one, it has a demonstration of a, le a wet, um, levee, and then we have a wetland and also some other adaptation strategies such as a raised structure. And you can um, see firsthand how these different adaptation strategies can be applied in the real world. And so a couple other curriculum that we have, other lesson plans that aren't shown in this video are thermal expansion. We have a do-it-yourself sea level rise assessment where students can actually create their own vulnerability assessment, kind of like we did in the county, but probably not 200 pages worth. And we also have a game of floods, which I'm gonna go into in more detail soon. And our last lesson plan we have is designing green infrastructure. And all of our lesson plans align with the next generation science standards, the NGSS, and includes worksheets, vocab, graphics from our vulnerability assessment, and other interactive activities. All of our curriculum is free. The teacher is available for anyone to use. And we're actually gonna be coming out with a finalized version with maybe about three additional lessons plans in the next few months. And our hope is that people can take this, use it more broadly. And we're happy to share that now we have our draft version or also the finalized version if anyone is interested. And we actually, so how this curriculum did, was continued to be developed is we have a committee of local educators, both informal and formal, who help us kind of guide what they think is the most applicable and kind of gaps they've seen in other curricula that exist out there. So we really listened to what they would like to be learning about and what, um, so we, we kind of took the feedback from them as well as like what we learned from our vulnerability assessment and started putting together this curriculum. And then um, the teacher advisory committee assisted us in that throughout and we're reviewing all the lesson plans as well. And then also pilot like, piloting them in their classroom. So they're really great and we love having them. Um, so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about how we promote the S program and conduct outreach for it. So the S program has traditionally been for high school students within San Mateo County. Um, and we usually provide this program to high school science classes or AP environmental science um, courses as well. Um, and we reach out to teachers to see if they're interested in having their class participate in the program. Before outreach and promotion occurs, we look at free and reduced price meal rates among high schools as a way to identify schools and students that have limited resources. We really want to ensure that we are providing this program to students and schools in an equitable way. And so that students with limited resources have equal opportunity to participate. In order to ensure that these students have access to the YES program, we offer it to select schools first the schools that have the higher rates of students that are eligible for free and reduced lunches before promoting it to other schools. Currently, this program is filled on a first come first serve basis. So providing select schools with an early opportunity to sign up, we hope to increase accessibility for them. So as Carolyn was mentioning, um, the San Mateo County Sea Level Rise Vulnerability Assessment identified 34 schools that are at risk of um, flooding from sea level rise based on mid-emission scenarios. Um, and so we're in the process of developing or taking that data and developing a map that specifically calls out schools that are in the sea level rise flood risk zone and hope to use this map in the future as a way to make sure that we're working with schools and providing this program to um, schools that are most vulnerable to the impact of sea level rise. The S program is also available in Spanish and other languages as needed. Um, and this is because we really want to make sure that the program and associated resources are as accessible to students as possible. Um, and so that we can also meet the needs of teachers who have English um, language learner students in their classes. 
Um, and last year, we actually had two field trips that were um, led entirely in Spanish. And we have been approached about providing the program also in Mandarin, which we hope to do um, this coming school year. So the S program is also extremely flexible, and we're always happy to work with teachers to make sure that we can modify the curriculum in a way that meets their needs. Um, and also, one of the best parts about it is that the YES program is free. So we have partnerships with several nonprofit organizations within the region, which we'll expand upon a little bit later, who help us implement the programming and also provide us with field trip sites and um, interactive activities and access to their equipment. Um, the county here, we provide all transportation costs for schools. So we are the ones that pay for the busing to and from the field trip sites. And we hope that by removing all these financial barriers that we're able to provide the, this program to schools and teachers who might not have the resources to go on these field trips otherwise. Overall, the S program really hopes to provide knowledge and experience to students who have limited resources and might not get the opportunity to learn about climate change or sea level rise in the classroom, while also providing them with a fun experience that gets them outside and interacting with the natural environment around them. So when talking about climate change and sea level rise to students, it's really important that your messaging is positive and hopeful. Um, and the last thing that you want to do is to make students feel down, depressed, or hopeless when thinking about climate change and sea level rise. So during our program, we have a few best practices we'd like to follow, we like to follow to make sure that we are inspiring our students rather than scaring them, because let's be honest, climate change and sea level rise is a really heavy topic and can sometimes feel really overwhelming. So this slide kind of outlines some of the best practices that we do when communicating to students about sea level rise and climate change. So some of the things that we do is provide students with foundational information on what climate change is and sea level rise and some of the science behind it, why and why it's happening. But always making sure that we're following our information up with positive and action-oriented messaging. We also like to use interactive and hands-on activities as a way to reinforce learning and for students to not only hear what's happening, but also to see what's happening. We also like to make sure that we're creating a space where students feel safe to ask questions and express any concerns that they might have. We like to express that sea level rise and climate change is a shared problem across our generations, and that we all have to work together to solve this problem. This is also a really great opportunity for us to empower youth and make sure that they have um, the knowledge, tools, and resources to take action within their schools, um, at home, or within their own community. And we do this by empowering action and being very solution-oriented with our framing. We always talk about things that students can do um, and to really inspire them so that we together can make a difference. Um, and so this slide right here really shows, um, this is a slide that we show to our students to give a bigger, or show a bigger picture of some of the ongoing and planned sea level rise projects that are taking place across San Mateo County. For example, Foster City recently voted to heighten its levee or barrier that protects it from flooding and sea level rise. So this is just more of a, a snapshot showing that there are projects taking place now that are um, in work to protect um, people and places across the county. And if you have any more questions about any of the projects that you're seeing on this slide, feel free to reach out to us and we um, are more than happy to provide you with more information on these. Great. So what is the YES program all about? I mentioned already that various lesson plans and I went into some of the details about our curriculum, but I haven't really talked about how we use them. And aside from teachers being able to use these lesson plans independently in their classrooms, we also have our staff that goes into classrooms at a teacher's request to help with any of these activities or also to facilitate the game of floods. So the first part of our YES program is really that classroom learning, really wanting to build up that foundation of sea level rise science and climate change knowledge with the students. The second part of the YES program is where we take that knowledge into the field. So we have a couple different fields, we have three different field trip opportunities right now for YES students, and we're looking at expanding that as well in the fall and spring. And the last part of our program is where students can take these different lessons and apply them in some sort of a final project. 
and really taking a deeper dive and exploring their knowledge. So talking about the Game of Floods, this is one of our, our big programs that we've done uh, for the last few years with our students in the classroom. The Game of Floods is a facilitated activity that starts with a presentation about climate change and sea level rise and really talks about how it's impacting the county. And then afterwards, students break out into small groups around this game board that you can see on the slide here. So this large game board has an imaginary community in it. And in that community, there's different flood zone scenarios that have buildings, ecosystems, roads, hospitals, um, homes, and all sorts of things you'd find in a typical town. And students pick cards that give them a character to portray throughout the entire game. Um, some examples are like an elected official, city planner, environmental coordinator, different, um, different acting ones that they can kind of keep throughout this game and give them a sense of what they want to protect on the game board. They're also given a budget and they have to determine which of these different assets on the map that they want to protect from flooding and which strategy they might use to do so. They can refer to a sheet that shows them all the different pros and cons for each strategy, such as cost, environmental impact, effectiveness of protection, and so on. And then they take these little pieces and actually put them on the board and tally up to see if whether or not they can protect everything they want and, to, and have a discussion around that and with their character as well. It seems like a really exciting opportunity for students to work together using a budget to think like a city planner and really think about sea level rise impacts more critically, such as environmental, social, and cultural impacts. And we've actually played this game with adults and we do facilitate it with different organizations. So if this sounds like something you wanna do for a little team building exercise, let us know and we're happy to come facilitate this um, anywhere pretty much in the Bay Area. So we'd love to do that too. And we've actually had some students as well um, who we've trained to go out into the community and facilitate this project. So it's really fun and it's a great way to kind of engage with sea level rise risks. The second component of our guest program I mentioned are field trips and this really strengthens the experience for students. We partner with two different local organizations in order to make these field, trip ha field trips happen. We just started partnering with the Marine Science Institute last fall and are, and are going, essentially incorporating our curriculum into with combining it with their curriculum of their Wonders of Watershed program. And we have three different um, experiences with them. So we have the first where we both go into a classroom together and meet with a group of students. Then we take the same group of students a different day to a creek and do a water quality testing and talk a little bit more about some of the different sea level rise activities I mentioned previously. And then our last field trip is we actually go canoeing near Bear Island at the Marine Science Institute. And we do more um, water quality testing and um, a deeper dive into sea level rise and have a really uh, deep conversation with our students at this site. And with grassroots ecology, um, we do some similar, of our, some similar activities as well. And then we partner with them and go to Cooley Landing and do a lot of habitat restoration. We do native um, species planting and also um, watering, whatever needs to be done to kind of restore that habitat. We've also done a living shoreline project with a local artist, uh, Linda Gass, and actually um, planted these native juncus plants to show um, um, some sea level rise projections. And of these different partnerships in the last year, um, you can see numbers here, we've reached over 150 with Marine Science Institute, and 170, over 170 with grassroots ecology, including um, over 200 of these native plants. And then our final component of the YES program is um, the final projects. And this is really an opportunity where students can apply what they've learned. Some previous examples that we've done so far are community interviews about sea level rise experiences, presentations to local government boards, and a community living shoreline art project, which I mentioned here you can see um, that blue picture with the, with the stakes and the flags in it. That's where we were actually marked out the, um, the place where students would go in and then, then plant that junkus plant there. So um, for this upcoming school year, we have big plans and ideas for the YES program. Um, and so I'm going to go into kind of our goals and the vision for YES uh, moving forward. 
So we're really hoping to increase the number of traditionally underserved students and English as a second language students um, that the program reaches. We hope to do this by expanding the program beyond high school classes and um, doing this by potentially offering it to middle school science classes, as well as partnering with or expanding the program to community-based organizations or nonprofit organizations that also work with youth. Um, we plan to create a stronger connection to Indigenous peoples and Native tribes within the F curriculum by collaborating with the Ohlone tribe and working with them on how to do this. We are also in the very early stages, as Carolyn said, of updating the YES curriculum. So we currently have seven lesson plans and we're planning to add three more um, and we will be refining each lesson so that they're easier for teachers to implement and can also be used um, more broadly throughout the region. And once our curriculum is finalized um, next year, we hope to have it completely translated into Spanish and Mandarin and then other languages if necessary. Um, so other exciting news um, and plans for the S program include wanting to add another field trip site um, on the coast side so that we can better talk about sea level rise and erosion and maybe even expanding programming so that we can talk about ocean acidification as well. Um, further, we plan to develop a data collection protocol for students as a way for them to contribute to or validate local sea level rise data. And this is something that can take place during the field trips that they go on. Um, as Carolyn mentioned, students currently are collecting water quality data when they go um, in the canoes and then also within the creek study. And um, some of this data includes pH, salinity, turbidity, temperature, all water quality parameters. Um, and right now, there's nothing that's really done with it. Our partner, Marine Science Institute, usually takes the data that's um, collected by students and compiles it, but then it just sits there. So we're kind of trying to think of ways um, for students to use this data in a more meaningful way, like maybe having them compile it themselves, um, and over time, they'll, we'll build up a larger data set that can span over years, and students can assess any changes or similarities and hypothesize why these changes might be occurring based off of what they learned through the F program. Also, we're still just trying to figure this out, um, and this is something that, um, you know, we're, we're super open to ideas and other suggestions. So if you have any ideas or resources um, or interest in working with students in sea level rise or climate change data collection, please get in touch with us and we would love to collaborate with you on this. And finally, we are um, also in the very early stages of creating a youth climate ambassador program, which is really for students who are wanting to take a deeper dive into climate change and sea level rise and apply it to their own schools and communities. This program will be a mixture, it's a year long program, and it'll be a mixture of retreats, skill building, networking, youth leadership and professional development, as well as mentoring students while they create a climate action plan for either their schools or communities as a way to either reduce greenhouse gases um, or prepare for climate impacts. Um, and so students will also implement their action plans throughout this program um, with the support of staff from our office, from San Mateo County's Office of Education, and also a few of our partners um, uh, at nonprofit organizations. Um, like I said, this is still very much in the early phases um, and is still being designed and developed, but we're all really excited about this. So stay tuned. Um, and so this is a quote here that Carolyn and I both thought was um, a really great way to wrap up our presentation. Um, and this is a quote from a student that went through the YES program. And we think it's a great example of um, the student experience um, with this. Program. So I'm not going to read this quote out loud, but I'm going to give you, you know, maybe 10 seconds to read this to yourself or out loud because we can't hear you. So Okay, so I hope that was enough time for you to read that. But like I said, that we think this is a really powerful quote from one of our students and it really um, validates the, um, the value and experience students have through this program. 
Um, so now we're going to actually do a poll. Um, and so think, now that you know more about the YES program, thanks so much for listening to us share with you more of the details about it and what this program offers for students. Um, so now we're just interested, um, now that you know more about it, if you are interested in getting involved in the program, and if so, how would you like to be um, involved? So um, I think the poll is open. So we'll give you um, 30 seconds to answer. Okay, if you haven't answered yet, think about answering because we're going to close it soon. Okay, we could probably close it. So we will look at those. And with that, we just want to say thank you. Oh, can we view it? I think, yeah, I think Dan can share it. I think he can maybe see it now. Great. Okay. Thank you. And we can also send out. Yeah. Okay. I think it's sharing the results also. Okay. And we can share that out too. Yeah. Anyone that, yeah. That missed it. Great. Well, we just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and listen to both of us talk more about the YES program um, and a lot of the different nitty gritties of the program. Perfect. And also, if anyone has any additional um, would they like to get involved in any of our other programs with our team, our climate change adaptation team, whether it's our climate action plans, we have our climate collaborative I mentioned, we have a green business program, we have a free academy for adults that can learn how to compost and do some other activities. So yeah, anything you want to be, you'd love to learn more about, please feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. And um, with that, yeah, thank you so much. And we will take any questions or comments that you have now. Great, thanks Zoe and Carolyn, that was, that was awesome. Um, now's the time folks on the line to, to drop in any questions you have for them. Um, we have a couple questions here we can start off with while the others are coming in. Um, the first one here, can you give an example of how teens are taking back what they learn in this program to their communities? Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually one of them is, this, is is um, probably the most recent example that has happened is we did an outreach um, to our youth commission, which is a group of high school students throughout the whole county of San Mateo that meets um, twice a month and did uh, the Game of Floods activity with them. And they actually were inspired to get more involved in, in our sea level rise policy and went to different um, board, boards throughout different cities and did presentations on their own about sea level rise based on what we had talked about and also started facilitating the game of floods in their community. So that's been a really um, recent project. I think that was more in the spring, maybe like May and June that there, these students were doing that. Um, also, a lot of students have done like community interviews in the past to really get an understanding of what folks have experienced in terms of flooding and really hear actual stories from the community members and um, get, hear their concerns about sea level rise and flooding it on the ground. Yeah, so there's a couple examples and we're also, like Zoe mentioned with our youth ambassadors program, hoping to really expand that and get, you know, get students even more involved in the community because I know there's a lot of interest with that. So we really want to be able to support that um, excitement and interest in students in whatever way that we can. Great, thanks. Here's a, here's a quick clarification question. What, which, uh, if you could just expand on which grade levels the current curriculums are for and what future curriculums you're working on? Yeah, definitely. So right now we've written the curriculum for high school students, so grades nine through 12. And our actual, like when we do the in-classroom presentations, we do modify it a little bit. If we're doing like an AP environmental science class, we'll, we'll sometimes have little, um, a little bit more advanced vocabulary than if we're doing a ninth or 10th grade science class. And then we also do get occasional middle school teachers reach out to us and then we'll, we'll do mainly the same presentation, but a little bit easier to understand. And we, yeah, we'd love to, we have had a lot of requests to expand our curriculum to middle school. So that's something that we're hoping to do as well and really 
um, work with middle school teachers in the county and how to make that even more accessible to younger younger levels. Next one here is, is there a 3D map for Marin County and do you work in Marin County or do you know if this work is being done there? Yeah, you know, there actually probably is a 3D map of the county and that's actually, so, so making that map was something that we had a lot of um, help from our IT department with. It was, it was pretty tricky, but there are a lot of GIS layers available for different, for, for pretty much, I don't know, I'm not positive, but tons of um, different area and geographic locations have some sort of 3D GIS data set. So we worked closely with our IT department on that, um, did a lot of trial and error to make sure that this would actually be printable. And um, so, I, yeah, I can definitely check into that. I know the, um, the folks that have done this before at Marin, so I'd be happy to connect um, whoever's asking the question with them and see what we can get a little bit more detail about so if there's a map layer and then how um, we can see up the pro how the program is involved there. Great. Next question here, how long in terms of time commitment does this program take for students to go through? Yeah, so it depends on kind of the interest of the teacher. So when we did the pilot program last fall with uh, the Marine Science Institute, that was a three, um, basically a three different opportunities where we would have students. So the in-classroom portion was about an hour and a half, and then the creek study was about three hours, and the canoe trip was about another three hours. And we do require that students did all three of those to have that deeper learning experience. If teachers don't have the time, and that was actually, that was very popular, and we do have a lot of interest from teachers to expand that beyond just the pilot program with the three different teachers we tried it with in the fall. But if, if a teacher wants to do like a, um, you know, just a game of floods demonstration and has like an, like an hour or so, then we just do that and we modify um, and, and kind of pick and choose what is relevant to what they're learning about at the time or what the teacher's interested in. So it can be, a, you know, it can be across the board, either just like a couple, one hour to like a three day experience. And this takes place over um, the whole semester. Are any instructions for any of these activities that you've gone through today available online? They're not available online, but we do have them all in draft form. So we're going to wait till we had our, um, developed the final curriculum to post it online just to get, the, to get it perfect. But um, we're happy to share the drafts with anybody on this, on this webinar. Great. Scrolling through a couple comments here that we can go over after. And some, ooh, some interest in presentations. That's good. Great. <laughs> All right, we're, we're coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, here we go. Here's, a, here's another question. Um, folks, we're coming up on a, the last couple questions here. So if you have any more, please get them in um, while they're answering this one here. Um, how do you talk about climate change to communities who are more focused on meeting their basic needs? as you know, with keeping in mind low income areas or, or people of color, communities with people of, people of color. Yeah, no, that's, that's something that we're, that's definitely a big um, topic of conversation. And we're always really working to make sure that we're thinking first of the real struggles that folks are going through that, um, you know, a lot of this stuff has to take a back burner if you're really struggling to meet those basic needs. You know, you can't be thinking about um, you know, doing anything, anything extra. So what we've, what we've done before to try to really um, engage is we have been able to provide stipends to folks to travel to meetings. Something that we've also talked about on our team is being able to provide daycare and um, dinner at some of our events to really be able to cater to like any, you know, to, to get more people in the room and um, have, have a, a larger audience and you know, not just have a meeting at noon on a Monday, right? So really trying to be, and go to the actual locations where people are living versus having them come to us. So we're really, I guess, trying to keep evolving that concept. And um, I think part of the thing that we do is really try to listen to folks' concerns, you know, and just be as understanding as possible and not um, 
come at folks with a, you know, all of this information and here's what you can do, here's what you should do, but really try to first understand like their concerns and then, um, you know, think of how we can think of ways together that might work within their lives and not just assume um, assume anything. Yeah, and, and I think that to like expand upon what Carolyn said, it's more so just providing information with those communities too because we want to be able to empower them and also provide them with information on how they can protect themselves um, from potential impacts too. Yeah, and our, our vulnerability assessment, you know, I know we, we, there's a lot of studies that have really shown that the those different communities are the ones that are not only already most impacted by climate change, but have the least opportunities to pick up and go or to do anything, um, you know, about it, to, to, to modify their homes and this sort of thing. So we really do want to be as mindful and, to, you know, keep keep a, um, doing our best on our end to reach those communities in particular. Really important. And really to make sure that we're providing them with as much resources as we can. So whether that's education, knowledge, um, or actual resources and connections. Excellent. Great. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any other questions at this time, so this is truly the last call for folks on the line. If you have something you, you want to ask, um, we'll wait a couple seconds here. Oh, I am noticing that my email is wrong on here, so sorry about that. So it's actually it's actually C Raider, like like um the team, the football team. So um yes, yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So just just take note, please email me if you have any questions or anything. But just um yeah, it's just C Raider. Great, and I think we're not we're not seeing any more questions right now. So it looks like we'll, we will be able to finish up a little early here. Um, Zoe and Carolyn, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, much appreciated. There's a ton of interest, clearly, about following up. So I'll be connecting some people here today, I think, which is awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing your expertise. And thank you to all attendees for tuning in today. We'll follow up with a recording of today's presentation, too, for folks who want to see it. And we'll, we'll also get a copy of the slides, maybe not including videos, but uh, we'll definitely get copies of slides out to folks who want to use them and, and talk about this awesome program. So with that, uh, enjoy the rest of your lunch break or the rest of your day, folks. Have a good one.